for ourselves. Are bad guys going to use them? Maybe. But we can use it first. Okay? And, and that's the point of making it available. All right. So just to sum up, Zigbee not going away. We're going to see it in more and more verticals, okay? more and more areas. It's already very popularly deployed in some parts of the country. It's rapidly gaining market acceptance and market dominance because there really aren't any competing technologies that work well. You can go to Radio Shack today and buy Zigbee derivative hardware, okay? smart electrical outlets. Okay. My wife wants one so that she doesn't have to unplug the toaster when she leaves the house. She just presses a button and it shuts off the electrical outlet. Okay. This is how people are going to be using this kind of technology. And then as an attacker, what happens if I can turn that back on? Okay. These are the kind of problems that we need to look into and, and figure out what the issues are so that we can address them ourselves. Okay. Um, my issue is that vendors haven't taken Zigbee security seriously. Okay? And you can talk about a problem all day long until you demonstrate it. It just doesn't have the same impact. Okay? And that's what I'm hoping you can do now that these tools are available. All right. You can get the killer bee code at killerbee.googlecode.com. There's minimal documentation there, but if you look at the README file, there's some good stuff. Okay? Um, you know, if you're interested in working with Killer Bee, I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a note and we'll you know, help you get started with hardware, and then you know, I'd love to hear your ideas on new things that we can do with the framework. Questions? Sir? Uh, you mentioned that uh, the stacks are available as open source. Well, that's kind of true. There's a lot of uh, lower level open source stuff that is totally OK, and both transceivers and stuff. Like, for example, the chip that he just held up, mm -hmm. uh, all of the Mac offloading stuff is in a blob that's in ROM, in firmware, that, that, that first of all, they've Mm -hmm. um, and also, it's not really documented at all. You have to basically use the free scale library, which is just hard coded like extra points or locations of RAM. So, if you want to use that, you basically have to dump it and disassemble it. Well, that the, the magic numbers inside the chip um, have like, you know, worked out. And, and you know, most of the time, that's, that, that's not really uh, important from a security perspective, but that's also where all of the Mac AES offloading is. Mm -hmm. Uh, th that's an interesting, uh, interesting point. Um, so while the Zigbee stuff is open source, like the lower level stuff is not. You know, that's interesting on the Freescale side. That's not been my experience on the TI or the Ember side. Okay, uh, I haven't really done a lot of work with Freescale yet, um, although that seems to be the next hardware platform we're going to be adopting. Um, but uh, I know on the TI side, well. I believe the new Atmel also does the same thing. Oh, really? That's unfortunate, but I don't know. As, as a hardware vendor, I don't know if I'd find that acceptable. But I don't make hardware products, so yeah, I, I bet it is. It, very, very good point. Thank you for sharing that, sir. Two questions: What was going on kernel-based? Okay, so um, uh, it's all user mode stuff. The question is: What's going on in kernel space for my demo? Uh, nothing. It's all user mode stuff. It's all just writing libUSB-ish kind of things, okay? Um, which is unfortunate because you can't transmit and receive on the same interface at the same time because my user space code doesn't handle any kind of time sharing or scheduling or anything like that. The hardware is cheap enough where that hasn't been a problem for me yet. But um, there is a Zigbee kernel stack that's in development right now. I don't know about the stability of it, but there is going to be a Linux Zigbee stack. And then I'm hoping to migrate all the tools to that so that I can get out of the business of doing driver related things. And I also want to ask, um, first, any objections to the EBR stack? Um, what was that like? What was that process like? Is there any downside to it? If I, if I do that, my model will just. Yep. Uh, to, so uh, the RZ USB stick comes with a big open source firmware thing, and they compile it and they load it on the sticks that you get from the manufacturer. I basically modified that, added my new USB op codes to say, take this bulk write and send it as a packet. Okay, it, it was very very straightforward. It was you know maybe a couple hundred lines of C, not a big deal. Um, the downside is that you just need the AVR, the ICE programmer, to be able to apply it. And that's just costly and it's a pain because you need special 0.1 to 0.05 pitch adapters and, and things like that. So, so that's uncomfortable, 
but otherwise all the functionality is retained. Now, one thing I did change here was that I changed the USB ID so that I could recognize not only that it's a Killer B flashed firmware as opposed to stock firmware, but that what version of the Killer B firmware it is so that as I add new features, I know what I can expect from the hardware interface side. So if you flash my firmware, then it's going to change how it would interact with other USB drivers. Um, but you know, it's all very friendly. If you have a programmer, then you know, it's not very complicated to see. OK, good. Sir? Oh. On that note, if, you also, if, you may, if you've ever modded a PlayStation or an Xbox, you can make the mod to the Raven program with an ISD program. Okay. So that, that, that's the skill level. It's really not that hard. Yeah, I, I found it quite difficult personally. But <laughs> OK, I, I have a lot of caffeine, though, so my hands don't really, yeah. So uh, that's a wonderful question. How does the utility talk to the devices in my house? That is a question that nobody's been able to answer for me yet. And I've asked it many times. Um, there are some vendors out there who are building, I want to be your hub, you know, energy network devices, where you'll buy one from Best Buy. You'll put it in your house, and it will be the intermediary between the utility and your devices in the house. Technically, any one of them could have that interface. It, it could. It comes from us, right? Yep, yep. Now, what we're seeing today, before those boxes are available, is that a lot of utilities are providing you with the thermostat and the meter. And then they're just controlling all of that stuff. It limits you because the thermostat can't use Zigbee to talk to other peripherals in your house. But then that gives the utility the, the ability to do what's called demand response control, where they can say, you know, um, in order for you to turn on your air conditioner, which is a thermostat function, you have to get approval from the utility first. And the utility only lets you if it's a non-peak utilization period. Okay? So we're, we're seeing some deployments that are, that are based like that, too. Uh, totally, yeah. I mean, these are all, all the question is, well, you know, let's say uh, I put my own hardware device between my air conditioner and you know this uh, this thing, so that the utility believes it's really shutting off my power, but it's not. I mean, ultimately, they can see what your utilization is and what your draw is, even if they go back to the. Um, for controlling it over the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, you, so the question is, you know, if I could boil it down, can I dev my own stuff to control the temperature in my house over the internet, like through Zigbee peripherals and stuff like that? I mean, you could, I'm not making a reference as to want, but you could do that. And, and I think that what we'll see with some of these third party providers is that they're all coming with cloud mechanisms. So you'll be able to get an iPhone app to control the temperature in your house kind of thing too. So you know, we, we are seeing that kind of development as well. I'm personally petrified of that. And, and one of the, I need to take this off first, but 